Good day. In this module, we're going to be talking about the problem of uh, measurements, uh, how you do it, uh, how you quantify it, and those sorts of things. Um, there are lots of ways that you can characterize uh, any kind of science. Uh, some people say it's the presence of the scientific method. Uh, some people say it's the objective study of nature. But if I had to point to one characteristic of science that sets it apart from other uh, kinds of intellectual endeavor, I would say that it involves measuring things, uh, being able to quantify uh, things in nature so that you can compare them uh, meaningly fr meaningfully from one, uh, one situation to uh, another. And so there's a whole theory of measurement and units and dimensions that uh, we need to know if we're going to uh, understand some of the concepts that we'll be talking about uh, in the physics course over the course of the semester. One of the important uh, distinctions we have to make is the difference between dimensions and units. And uh, these two terms are often used interchangeably, but in science they have a very, very specific meaning. And, and uh, we have to be cognizant of that meaning because it will help us in uh, being able to do some of the uh, analyses and uh, understanding some of the concepts that we will be discussing. For example, if you're measuring a room for carpet, uh, uh, it's quite common to say, uh, to talk about the dimensions of a room. But in fact, what you're really talking about are the measurements of a room. Dimensions are something uh, entirely different. Uh, now, the, um, the problem of distinguishing between dimensions and units is actually quite a simple one. Uh, uh, when someone uh, measures something, when you quantify something, there are two basic questions you have to ask. Uh, what are you measuring and how are you measuring it? And uh, when you ask the uh, what are you measuring question, uh, dimensions are the appropriate thing to uh, be talking about then. When you're talking about how you measure it, then units uh, start to come into play. It's not made any easier by the fact that uh, despite this need for precision, uh, physicists have actually two different ways of talking about uh, dimension. Uh, one of the most common ways is, is actually the one that, uh, that most uh, people think of when they think about dimensions. And that is that uh, if you take, uh, for example, a line between two points, that line has a dimension of length. Uh, and, uh, but if you uh, now make a square, you now have two lengths. You have a width and you have a height. Both of those are dimensions. And if you extend this to three dimensions, as you might in this imaginary cube right here, you not only have a height, a width, but you now also have a depth. And when you define volumes, you are talking about a, a space that's enclosed by heights, widths, and depths. Uh, physicists also talk about a so-called fourth dimension, and you see this quite often in science fiction type, uh, type of, of uh, situations, and that is the fourth dimension is time. Now, physicists uh, uh, approach dimensions in this way uh, for very good reasons. Uh, uh, one of the uh, ways in which this use of dimension is applied is in cosmology and, uh, and, and those sorts of uh, endeavors. And it's not unusual to see physicists uh, talking about multiple dimensions beyond these uh, four elementary dimensions, uh, height, width, uh, depth, and time. Uh, for example, uh, uh, physicists uh, have defined as many as uh, 11 dimensions that characterize the measurement of the universe. And uh, when you start getting up into the 11th dimension, then you're getting into areas like string theory. Now, you'll be pleased to know that uh, we're not going to be getting into that here in the physics of life. Uh, we're going to be approaching physics in a much more uh, mundane level. And uh, this leads us to the other common way in which uh, the word dimension is applied. And that is to describe a particular uh, property of matter that you wish to measure. And uh, physicists uh, recognize uh, uh, three fundamental uh, dimensions of, uh, of, of matter and uh, the, the uh, universe. And these dimensions are length. And the usual convention is to uh, enclose a dimension that you're speaking about in square brackets. Uh, in this case, uh, we will symbolize the dimension of length as, uh, as a bracket, or as L in brackets. Uh, mass, and we usually describe that with a capital M enclosed in square brackets. And then the third one is time. Uh, 
which we describe as uh, a T inside square brackets. Now you'll see this is a little bit different from the uh, use of dimension uh, that uh, a cosmologist or someone interested in, s in, uh, in describing the structure of the universe might apply. In this case, we really only have three uh, dimensions here. Uh, we have the length, which we had in the other uh, use of the word dimension, but we also have mass and we have time uh, as well. And these three dimensions are known as the uh, mechanical dimensions of matter. Now, uh, the universe is, is quantal, that is, it comes in small, uh, discrete packets, and uh, so one of the things that, uh, that, that we can do is define uh, a fourth dimension that describes this property of matter, and that is uh, to define quantity, and what we'll do is we will describe that as a capital N enclosed in square brackets. Now, you'll notice here that we're not uh, referring to uh, length or mass with any kind of, uh, kind of measure like pound or kilogram or inch or any of those sorts of things. When we talk about dimension, we're talking about the existence of a property of matter. And this is a kind of I I idealizing of, of the universe. Uh, we're saying that uh, length is something that exists and it's something that can be measured. We're not getting into any uh, issues of how it can be measured. Uh, we'll be getting into that uh, in a little bit. Uh, the same thing with mass. We're saying that mass is a thing that exists and it's something that we can measure. Same thing with time and same thing with quantity. And so that's the, uh, that's the uh, fundamental uh, definition of a, a dimension. Now, there are all kinds of clever things that we can do with these kinds of dimensional analyses. Uh, uh, we'll get into some of the more sophisticated areas when we talk about locomotion. But for now, what I'd like to do is to uh, lay out a series of rules for dealing uh, with dimensions because uh, one of the things you can do with them is treat them as if they are a mathematical quantity. That is, you can do uh, operations uh, on them. So, for example, we start off with the fundamental dimension of length. And as we said, that comes expressed in, as an L in a square bracket. Uh, but there are lots of things we can do with length. Uh, for example, we can calculate an area. And an area is just a two-dimensional uh, space uh, enclosed by one or more, or actually two or more lengths. Now, if we have a square, we have a, a width and we have a height. Both of those have dimensions of length. And so what we are talking about here is multiplying two lengths with one another. And that means that the dimension of area, again, this is we're just expressing something that can be measured, we can express as L squared. And the same thing with volume. If we take our cube that we described before, and we now have a depth. The depth is also a length. And so what we are talking about here is we can describe a volume as a product of three lengths. There are three lengths involved. And what we're going to end up with, th with there is a derived dimension of volume that is basically L cubed. Now, there are lots of different uh, of these uh, derived dimensions. Let's just uh, go through some of them right now because we'll have occasion to come back to them uh, uh, in other modules and also uh, in lecture. Uh, so, for example, let's take some uh, dimensions that are, uh, that, are that, that comprise multiple uh, quantities. Uh, so, for example, let's look at the quantity of density. Density is simply how much mass you can pack into a particular volume of something. So if you have a particular volume of air, it's going to be less dense than the same volume of water. Water weighs more, it's more dense, so there's a lot more mass in there, and therefore uh, density is, again, one of these properties that we know we can measure, uh, but it, it, it is a combination of the uh, fundamental mechanical dimensions that we outlined earlier. So in this case, we have a volume and we already know that the volume <coughs> is, uh, is the uh, cubic, uh, is the cube of the dimension of length. But we also know that mass is involved somehow. 
And uh, in this case, we are talking about uh, uh, mass. Uh, it's just a mass that's, the, that's there. It just exists. And the units of density are going to be the mass divided by the volume. And that is our units, or our, I'm sorry, our dimension of density. Again, we're just stating that this is something that exists and that we can measure. Now, you'll see I've, I've, uh, I've written down this derived uh, dimension as a, a, a ratio, as a quotient. Uh, one of the things that we will uh, be seeing is that the standard usage in modern science is to avoid quotients and to avoid writing things down like this uh, as much as possible. So what we will uh, do then is we will simply say that the dimensions of density are mass. And instead of putting L cubed in the uh, denominator, we will say that this is mass times the inverse of the length cubed, and we express that as L to the minus third power. There are other uh, sorts of these derived dimensions that we can, that we can uh, uh, talk about. Here's a simple one, uh, speed, for example. Well, we know that uh, that's going to be the uh, ratio of, uh, of a distance over a time. And so what we can do is we can express the dimensions of speed as a length times the inverse of time, or length to the time minus one. Uh, accelerations are going to be something that's very important for us to, uh, to understand. Uh, an acceleration is simply a change of speed with respect, to the, with, with respect to time. And so we can start off by saying we have an acceleration. That is a speed divided by a time. And we already have our dimensions for speed, L times time to the minus one. But now we have another dimension of time in the denominator. And so we simply multiply that by time to the minus one. And what we get then are the dimensions of acceleration, which are L times the dimension of t to the minus 2 power. And we can go on. Uh, one of the things that we'll be dealing with uh, quite frequently is, uh, is uh, force and uh, pressure and uh, work and those kinds of things. We'll be getting into that in a bit more uh, detail uh, later. But let's just take force because it helps us uh, to uh, illustrate this ability to combine, combine dimensions to make, uh, to make new quantities. Uh, we know that the force, force is equal to uh, the product of mass times acceleration. This is one of Newton's laws of motion, and we will be speaking more about that in another uh, module. But of course, we can see now here that we have a dimension of mass and if force is the product of mass times acceleration, uh, we already have acceleration as with dimensions of L length times time to the minus, sorry, minus two power. And uh, uh, so we say that force is something that exists. It can be derived from these fundamental mechanical dimensions of nature, and we can express it in a uh, particular way. And finally, just one more, because uh, we're just going to kick it up a notch here to show, show cons how, uh, how uh, uh, we can keep adding uh, d dimensions one to another. A pressure is equal to a force per unit area. Okay? And we have force. We have dimensions for area. And so now what we can do is we can say that the, uh, the uh, dimensions of pressure are mass times L times dimension of time to the minus two power. That's force. And we're dividing that by area, which has dimensions of length squared, but because it's in the denominator, we have to give this a minus sign. And now this gives us now the dimensions of pressure, 
in which case we write out, we just do the mathematical operation here. Mass is, stays as it is. Length is now the product of length to the one power in the, uh, in the numerator uh, times length to the two power in the denominator or length to the minus two power. When you multiply similar quantities uh, with different exponents, the, uh, the quantity stays the same, but the exponents are the, are the sum of those two things. And so now we have length raised to the one minus two or minus one power, and time stays the same, length to the minus two power. Okay, so we can do all kinds of uh, fun things with uh, dimensions. We can explore uh, 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 lots of uh, interesting uh, properties of, of nature, lots of interesting things that we can measure, and so forth. And one of the most uh, useful things about dimensions is that we can actually treat them as uh, mathematical quantities upon which you can do operations like multiplication and division. And in another module, we'll be uh, talking about how this can be used uh, to help develop a theory of units. <laughs>